Hello and welcome to Cross-Culture Therapy. My name is Philip Anderson and in today's video we're going to talk about the three pillars of the cross-cultural lifestyle and apply them to third culture kids. The three pillars of the cross-cultural lifestyle pertain to the three different cultures experienced by third culture kids in one single day, namely the home culture, the local culture, and the school or work culture, depending on if you're a TCK or an ATCK. Uh, if we choose to follow a, an example for the remainder of this video, wherein a Spanish person lives in Japan and goes to school in a British school system, the three different cultures in this case would be the home culture, which is Spanish, the local culture, which is Japanese, and the school culture, which is British. At home, the uh, person would be disciplined by their parents according to the norms and values of a Spanish culture. They will also maybe eat Spanish cuisine. They will eat, um, sorry, they will maybe watch Spanish TV shows and they might celebrate Spanish holidays. And in school, they will be disciplined by their teachers according to the norms and values of British culture. And they might eat British food and they might also celebrate British holidays. And by, uh, in traveling between these two, they also experience the local culture, which is the Japanese culture. They will be aware of Japanese holidays. They will also learn a little bit about the norms and values of Japanese culture, what is right to do, what is wrong to do, and how they discipline each other according to these different values as well. So these are the three pillars of a cross-cultural lifestyle and how they apply to third culture kids. Now let's discuss why they are so important to us. Now that we've taught the three different pillars of the cross-cultural lifestyle, why are they so important to us? Well, the answer is quite simple. Uh, third culture kids do not have full ownership of any of the cultures they are in. They can associate themselves with many different cultures, but they have a weak connection to each of these cultures, whereas non-TCKs have full ownership of the culture of their national identity. So in this case, the Spanish person living in Japan, going to a British school, will have been taught the norms and values of each of these cultures. But the at home, for example, their parents are the gatekeepers of their Spanish culture and can pick and choose which norms and values, which parts of the Spanish culture that they want to teach to their son, which they think are important to teach to, to their son. And as well as in the local Japanese culture, the Japanese people who talk to the Spanish person might uh, apply their culture to that person uh, whilst considering the fact that they are Spanish. So the norms and uh, values of the culture might be taught to the person um, knowing that the person is Spanish and not really giving the full view and the full impact of the culture. This, the same goes for the school culture. The teachers, which are in this case the gatekeepers of the British culture, may pick and choose what norms and values and traditions to teach to the student. So therefore, in each of these three cultures, the student does not get the full view of the culture, the full impact of the culture, and therefore cannot have full ownership of any, and must, in that case, pick and choose between the norms and values taught to him or her in each of these three subcultures, and tailor make a, a new identity for themselves. This is why the term third culture kids has been such a salvation for many TCKs because they can choose this as their identity in lieu of a national identity. So a lot of people say that they are third culture kids and so, instead of saying that they are Spanish, raised in Japan and gone to a, a British school system, they say that they are TCKs instead. So this is why the three pillars of a, a cross-cultural lifestyle are so important to third culture kids because this is what makes the foundation of their identity. So their whole identity is based on these three different subcultures that they have grown up in. So now what happens when one of these three pillars fall? 
So what happens when one of these three pillars fall? The one of the three pillars falls uh, most typically when the parents of uh, the person in question are forced to move due to work assignments or the person in question becomes old enough to move uh, to further their education. If we stick to the example of the Spanish person who lives in Japan and goes to a British school system, that person may be forced to move when they turn 18 to further their education. And since they've gone uh, to a British school system, they, it might be more convenient for them to go to school, go to university, sorry, in the UK rather than uh, go to university in Japan if they don't know enough Japanese or have not taken the uh, appropriate tests to get into the a Japanese university or go to university in Spain if their Spanish is not at the academic level. So they might quite simply be forced to move to the UK uh, when they might not want to. Um, and this in turn means that the local culture, the Japanese local culture, that pillar falls. And this constitutes an identity crisis um, for the third culture kid. Suddenly they move to the UK, they have the British school culture, they have the British local culture, and they have their Spanish culture, which they will never lose because they ethnically are Spanish. But they have nothing to show for their former local culture, which is Japanese. They are not ethnically Japanese, they do not look Japanese in any way. So this may force them into proving their adherence to the uh, former local culture. They might wear clothes that are more Japanese, they might uh, use Japanese mannerisms, they might eat a lot of Japanese food in front of others, they might also um, speak Jap a little bit of Japanese in front of others, they might try to find Japanese friends, they might, uh, they might um, watch Japanese TV shows and show their Japanese culture uh, forcibly uh, in a very unnatural way to try to cling on and prove that the uh, former local culture is still a part of them. Um, so this is what typically constitutes a, an identity crisis within third culture kids and this does not uh, dif uh, typically come to light until the person is old enough to have to move. Um, when people, when third culture kids are children, they are contained within this bubble with the three different pillars and this seems quite natural to them and when they become 18 and they're forced to move because of furthering their education or whatever, it might be something else, work or whatever, uh, they are forced to take one of these pillars down, the local culture most typically and therefore they lose a big part of their identity and it gets very hard for them to take it back. They try to forcibly take it back, but it also feels unnatural and that also makes it harder for them to assimilate into the new culture because they're clinging on to the old local culture. So this is what constitutes a lot of um, anguish within adult third culture kids. So, a special announcement to all our subscribers who are Third Culture Kids. As soon as we get up to 100 subscribers, we are going to start an Agony Aunt, Agony Uncle style of video wherein Third Culture Kids can either write in through the comments section on Facebook or comment section uh, down below questions about um, their situation or uh, about being a Third Culture Kid and we're going to answer each of them in a video. Uh, that is when we reach 100 subscribers. So please get your friends and everybody to subscribe to us so we can get up to 100 subscribers so we can offer that to you. Also, make sure to like the video. Comment down below um, about your three pillars, if you will. Um, what are your three pillars? Your home culture, your uh, local culture, and your school or work culture. That would be quite interesting for us to know. And uh, as always, if you want a session with us, go to www.crossculturetherapy.com and book a session there. Uh, it's all on video, so uh, you can do it from a place of your convenience at a time of your convenience as well. And then go also to our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and like us there as well. I think that was everything. Have a great day and take care of yourself.